on Monday, Thursday. Let us worship God. Please join me in the opening sentences. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. Let us pray. Holy One, now is the time in which Jesus is glorified, and you are glorified in him. Empower us to love as Jesus loved, so that everyone will know that we follow the way of Jesus Christ, our friend and Savior. Amen. Thanks be to God. 
You may be seated. said to him, do quickly what you are going to do. 
Now, no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, Judas immediately went out, and it was night. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. On this night, as we remember Christ's Last Supper with his disciples and celebrate our communion with him, I will have the rare opportunity to serve the bread and cup to each one of you. I will call you by name because God knows our names. God knows everyone's names. God knows the word that we'll think before we think it. God knows every word we're going to say before we say. Before we gather at the Lord's table for spiritual nourishment, we give God thanks for sending his Son for the healing of the world and that we might learn to follow in his life of humility and share in the joy of his glorious resurrection. It is my hope that you leave the table refreshed, renewed, and united by the Spirit so that you may be strengthened to keep Christ's new command. Given on the night, he was betrayed by one of his own. When he is troubled in spirit. You ever been troubled in spirit before? Troubled. Just as I have loved you, Jesus says, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. At the beginning of John 13, we learn that this meal isn't like any other meal that Jesus has shared with his disciples because suddenly as they are eating, Jesus gets up, he begins to disrobe, he takes off his outer robe, he ties a towel around himself, he pours water into a basin, and he begins to wash their feet this isn't done. This isn't done at the dinner table. Do you guys do that at your dinner table? You wash each other? You probably never wash each other's feet, right? It didn't happen then either. This is not something anyone but the lowliest servant would ever do, and it wouldn't be done at mealtime. Why does Jesus do this? He says, his hour has come. He does it because his hour has come. He knows that the Father has given all things into his hands. It's, it's up to him now. And that he has come from God. And that he has returned to God. He knows these are final moments. Peter cries out in horror and embarrassment. Would you want someone to see your feet? Would you want someone to smell your feet? Just think of how dirty these feet are. But to have Jesus doing this, my, but he was embarrassed that Jesus would so humble himself before him. You will never wash my feet. But he was wrong. Peter was wrong a lot. But he was very emotional and always authentic. Jesus is still modeling for his 
12 disciples and for us how to live when he is no longer with them in the flesh. You call me teacher and Lord, and that is right, he said, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Mom, you heard me say that. For I have set you an example. He didn't mean you actually had to wash each other's feet. But there wasn't anything more humble than that. That you would be willing to do that. How intimate that is. I'm not even sure if I want everyone to see my feet. How about you, Ron? No. It's a very intimate thing. Have someone touch your feet? Don't, don't you think? Yes. It is startling that when he shifts gears and he says, his, to his closest friends, one of you will betray me. So they have this intimate moment. And now he's revealing that one of them is not really one of them, right? Not all of you are clean, he said. One of you will betray me. Have you ever wondered why he didn't just name his betrayer? Why didn't he just stand up from the table, knock it over, and, and just yell at him? Judas, you're going to do this. I mean, that's what they would do nowadays, right? Wouldn't he tell the other disciples? That kind of bothered me. Like, why? Why wouldn't he just tell them? And then I thought, well, what would happen if the other disciples knew what Judas was going to do? Wouldn't they try to stop him? And then what needed to happen, what was ordained to happen, might not have happened. It might not have happened that way. Would they have prevented Judas from doing the deed that led to Christ dying on the cross? All we know for sure, and this is really hard for us to accept, is that the betrayal is part of a larger plan that God had for the salvation of the world. How could God use even betrayal for that? But he does. This doesn't change how Jesus feels about the betrayal. Remember, he's human. He is fully human, just like us. And how would you feel if, if your, one of your closest friends betrayed you and it was for some a little bit of money? You would feel really hurt. So Jesus is troubled in spirit. He's troubled, even though he knows God's will for him. He takes two people into his confidence. He takes Peter, the one who protested when Jesus began to wash their feet, and the disciple whom Jesus loved. Who is that? Who is the disciple whom Jesus loved? Some people think it's John, or the one who wrote the gospel. But others say... It's really for us to put ourselves into the story with Jesus, that we are all the disciple whom Jesus loved. So this is a rhetorical device reaching us, reaching out to us and bringing us to the sea with Jesus and the disciples. So we have information that maybe not everybody else has. We seek help from the Heavenly Father who knows us and loves us unconditionally, but we also need the comfort and love of the people we know and people who understand and accept us. When we're feeling bad, we tell someone else. And that's what Jesus does. All of Christ's followers are Christ's own. The ones whom Jesus has loved and will love until the end. This passage leads us to believe that Jesus wants to get the evil deed over with. This thing that Judas will do, that God will use for good purposes. Remember, he says to Judas, do quickly what you're going to do. Just do it. Judas leaves, and it is night. That word night just takes us into the darkness with him. We can feel the grief and pain of that moment. 
the foreshadowing of the suffering that is to come. But we also remember that always in that darkness, in any darkness, there is light. For Christ was with his disciples then, and he is with us now. And the power and hate, the hate and evil, never defeats the power of love. It occurs to me as I read this that Jesus loves Judas as much as all the other disciples. He is one of the twelve that are called to take up their crosses and follow him. This is Jesus modeling an even more difficult command than love one another. He's modeling to us the command to love our enemies. You've heard it, that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. He says this in Matthew. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. <coughs> May we, who eat from the bread of heaven tonight, and we who drink from the cup of salvation, be empowered to love as Christ loves, and in doing so, bear witness to our faith. May we be known by our love. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love, grace, and mercy, for accepting us just as we are. Lord, forgive us when we have failed to love our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, and those who we might see as enemies. We praise you for Jesus, our Savior and Teacher, who not only commands us to love, he gives us the perfect example and his Spirit to enable us to love. Fill us now with such love for one another that we bear witness to our faith and your healing, reconciling love. In Christ's name we pray.
so ever since, in all times and places, Christ meets us here. We are included in this feast, whether we are filled with faith or emptied with doubt, whether we are first among saints, last among scoundrels, or somewhere in between. And bread broken and cup poured out, we remember the full extent of Christ's love for us and give thanks. Come, let us join the whole communion of saints as we feast. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. You sent your Son, Jesus, for the healing of the world, that we might learn to follow his life of humility and share in the joy of his glorious resurrection. And so we praise you, singing. Thank you. 
feast of grace and life. As we have been served, help us to serve our neighbors. As we have been fed, help us to feed all who are hungry. As we have been loved, help us to love the world as you, in Christ Jesus, have loved us. Amen. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to one after another, Surely not I, Lord? He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. Son of man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee, Peter said to him. Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples.
he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him with a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword.
Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilee. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, as it is my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him. Thank you.
chief priests and elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. <clears throat> then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Jesus Christ to be the Savior of the world. We thank you for the mystery of your love as revealed to us on the cross. We cannot understand all that the cross may mean, but we feel your hand upon us and we would give ourselves afresh to you. Take our lives, use them in your ministry of reconciliation to a world deeply in need of love and mercy and justice and righteousness. Send us out to do your will. In Christ's name we pray.
Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they stuck his head with a reed, spat upon him, knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own, own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. 